The Atari VCS has been shipping out to backers of the Indiegogo campaign. I recently did a review of this device, gave you guys my thoughts and opinions on it. And there's quite a bit more we could do with this thing as essentially it is just a PC. But we're gonna be upgrading the RAM today. I've got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 SODIMM RAM. I also have this SSD, 250 gigabytes. You can go higher than that. I also wanted to test out this keyboard because I am going to be using Windows 10 on this device, which I have loaded up on this Samsung Fit 3.1 USB drive. And that works out beautifully well. It's a $20 drive for 128 gigabytes. Simply plug it in the back with the Windows 10 on it and we're pretty much good to go playing some Steam games and whatnot. Now in my review, I remember showing that there was a bunch of scuffs and scratches on this thing. And I live by this stuff right here, this Novus scratch remover. Number one and number two. Number one's a spray and it kind of, you know, cleans things up. The other one is a polish. I use that to clean up a lot of my consoles and it worked out great on this. So that screwdriver I just showed you is a Torx number T10 that we're gonna need to go ahead and get into this system. So underneath, there are these feet here and you don't have to rip them off. They just pop off where the screw hole is. So you can kind of, you know, pull that back a little bit without removing, you know, the adhesive and whatnot. So that's actually a nice little touch they did here. A lot of times, you know, these different systems, they just glue them down or have some kind of adhesive and you gotta peel them off. So I thought that was nice that you just gotta, you know, pull them back a little bit. But there we go. We just got those four T10 screws on the bottom there. And then once we get those out, we do have to remove both of the face plates. I only removed the, uh, the red face plate on this Onyx edition and then once I got that off, which, you know, don't use a screwdriver or anything, just kind of gently pry it off with your fingers if you can. And then I did just open it up like a clam. And the other, the front faceplate just kind of popped off. I should have pulled that off to begin with, but nothing was damaged, so that is okay. So we got that out of the way. I actually used that, that uh, Novus polish on that as well because it was a little scratched. So once we're in there, we have to remove this little Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. That way we're not ripping the cables or anything. That's the same Torx screwdriver for everything that you're gonna do here. So we got that removed, just set aside, set that screw aside. It's a smaller screw versus everything else that's in here. Like I said, it's just that T10 screwdriver you're gonna be using here. And it's just the black screws. You'll see there's a few of them on the board. We have to get all those removed to get to the underneath of the board in order to get to the RAM. So. We have to get that heat shield off. Once we get that off, I also had to unplug the ribbon cables for the USB ports that are on the front. Just pry up the little black tab, as you see, and then pull the, the cable out. Don't force it out. You might rip it or damage it. It's very simple stuff. Just pry it up with your finger and slide it out. Now on the front where the light is, that little light pipe type thing, there's a screw underneath it. That has to be removed as well. The screw that's holding in that clear plastic, you didn't have to remove it. You just have to loosen it so you could slide it to the side, but I just removed it and that was okay. But just wanted to point that out. You don't have to fully remove that screw to get access to the screw that's underneath it. You know what I'm saying? So there's the eight gigabytes of RAM that's built in. The clips on the side, you just kind of pull them to the side and the RAM kind of lifts up a little bit Then just simply pull them out. That's it. And when you put in your new RAM, which I'm doing 32 gigabytes, two pairs of 16 gigs. 32 gigs is overkill for this. Uh, you know, really 16 gigs would be fine. If you do 16 gigs, do two eight gigabyte RAM, you know, uh, modules. Don't do just one 16 gigabyte. Just, you know, works better with these kind of systems. So you pop them in, push it down. That just kind of clips back into place and you cannot put them in upside down or anything. They only fit in one way. So once I got those in, I reassembled everything, got all the little ribbon cables for the USBs back in, all the screws back in. Now we're gonna get that M2 drive in there. So I did just get a 250 gigabyte M2 SATA drive, has to be SATA. Uh, that's what they say is required for this. And there is no screw to mount it, but I had like these little rubber mounting things. Eventually I'll get a screw, but the little rubber mounting thing works just fine. This thing ain't going anywhere. So you just slide it in. And then for me, since I'm using that little rubber foot thing, it just kind of clips into place, but uh, it'd be preferable to use a screw to make sure nothing is, you know, moving around. Now getting that module back in there, 
for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Just reassembling everything, getting everything going there. All the screws back in. We're gonna power this up, initialize that SSD boot into Windows 10, all that good stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this bish down a little bit, get the little, the little crumbs out of the crevices here. I remember initially, like each of those little things were gonna be like individual pieces. Oh man, thankfully they, they changed their mind on that. But there we go. I used that Novus spray and just kind of wiped everything up. That stuff works amazing. Everything I'm using here, I will have a link to in the description if you're interested. Let's check out this Media Logitech keyboard real quick. Uh, you know, I just wanted to grab this. The price was right. It was like 20, 25 bucks or so. And there you go. You have a little USB adapter, which I'm gonna put into the back because the front, I wanna be able to use like arcade sticks and whatnot. So here we go. We got a couple batteries in there. Remove the little tab and it should be able to, you know, just work that way. So I'm gonna plug that into the back, get everything powered on, and we're gonna take a look if everything worked out. The RAM, the new SSD drive. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here we go, we've got the system booted up. We got the RAM in there. We've got Windows 10 going on. Got the keyboard right here, all that good stuff. We have that SSD in there. We're gonna make sure everything is looking good. Let's zoom up. And as you could see, we do have 32 gigabytes of installed RAM. So perfect. Let's go ahead and take a look at our hard drive. So if we go to like my PC or this PC, as you see, we don't have that SSD showing up. We have these Win2 USB uh, drives showing up. And I will put information in the description on how to install Windows 10 on this properly. So take a look at that if you wanna put Windows 10 on here without any issues. But like I said, as you see, we don't have that drive on there as of yet. So what we need to do is open up disk management. And if everything went as planned and it's actually recognized that RAM on the system, you should have like an unknown disk right here. And it may say that it's offline or not initialized. If it says it's not online, just uh, right click it and it should have an option to go ahead and put it online in this little square right here. So once that's there, it still doesn't show up. It's unallocated, it's not initialized, any of that stuff. So we're gonna right click once again, click on initialize. And then from here, we have a few options. It's gonna say master boot record or GUID partition table. We're just gonna leave it as that, click okay and now it's initialized. Now we're gonna have to format it. So new simple volume, next, next, assign the following drive letter. You could change it to whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it as is, letter E. And there we go. Like you don't really need to mess with anything. I'm just gonna leave everything as is, file system, NTFS, click next finish and it's formatting it. It is ready to go. We have that new volume popped up on the system. So let's go ahead and get out of this, go back to this PC, take a look at the drives. And there we go. We have that 232 gigabytes out of the 250 available there. Uh, so yeah, if you're not familiar, you know, if a drive says 250, it's not gonna show that on the system. Some may have varying degrees of what's available, what's not. Some may be 230, 233, whatever the case may be. So don't be surprised if you don't see the exact number, right? But we now have that, it is accessible. We can now use that, so that is pretty awesome. So the one thing with this system is, yeah, there's a lot of uh, possibilities with emulation and whatnot. And before I show, like I, I'm gonna play like Street Fighter uh, 4 for a second here. But this keyboard, I just wanna kind of give my thoughts on this real quick as, yeah, if you're gonna use Windows 10, you're gonna want a keyboard for this. And the other one that I was using, the one that I was using was this little re-wireless keyboard that has the trackpad in the middle and whatnot, scroll wheel on the side. And this was all right, it worked, but I, I was like, you know, it's too small for this application using Windows 10. So that's why I wanted to check this out. and. This was, I believe, 25 bucks. And honestly, 
it works for its intended purpose. If you're going to set this up on the desk, I mean, a, a better keyboard may be all right. This is just something cheap to have, you know, not multiple things plugged in at once. The trackpad works fine, you know, clicking the left and right, uh, you know, mouse buttons works fine. It, it works fine, but it does feel overly cheap, to be honest with you. So there's that. It's a very cheap keyboard, but it gets the job done. This is more meant to be like you're sitting in your living room and you want a wireless keyboard. You're kicking back, doing whatever. Uh, this is fine, but it's not the best thing in the world. I'm happy I bought it, but like I said, at the same time, I recognize it's a. it feels very cheap. It feels like I could barely flex it and you know I may crack it. I'm not going to be rough with it, so this should last a while, but... There's that. So what I wanted to do was show Ultra Street Fighter 4 running on this real quick. So let me move this keyboard out of the way. If you can see, I do have the 8-bit though. Little 2.4 gigahertz dongle right there. And the reason for that is I am using the 8-bit though arcade stick, the brand new arcade stick in 2.4 gigahertz. And I think this actually works out really nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it, turn it back on. We're in 2.4. Let's go ahead and get into this game real quick. But you know, I know there's a lot of stuff we can do with this system. If you got in early enough, like I was looking at the prices, like the Onyx Edition was $200. And for if you got this for $200, like holy crap, yeah, you got a good deal. Now is the Atari OS and everything offered through that great? Not really. But the things you could do with this, loading up Windows or any other operating system and, you know, having decent performance on a lot of different games is actually pretty cool. So, you know, at the $200 price point, crap, yeah. This was not a bad deal if you got in at that price point. It's going for like $400 now, I believe. So, uh, you know, it, it is what it is, right? And I know this is an older game, but I I, I freaking love this game. And this, this arcade stick just works flawlessly. Don't have to do any kind of configurations. Just plugged it in, powered it on, and the freaking thing works. There we go, got her, poison, or got him whatever you want to say. But there you go, cool little system for what it is. I mean, you know, I'm having some fun with it. This thing can emulate decently well a lot of systems, PS2, GameCube, obviously PlayStation 1, you know, Dreamcast. There's a lot of stuff you could do with this. If you bought one and you're disappointed with the Atari integrations anyway, there's still a lot of cool things we can do here. So, hey, I will be doing some follow-up videos in the very near future. Just wanted to guy, you know, give you guys this uh, little upgrade video in case you're interested. You know, some people are unloading these things on eBay. Uh, if you take a look out there, I mean, prices are all over the place. Maybe these things will be clearanced out at some time. I don't know. But just in case you want to buy one, very limited on what we can upgrade. But we can upgrade that RAM. We can upgrade the hard drive load up windows have some fun with it so screw it why not really do appreciate you guys i just hit my camera really do appreciate y'all i will catch you on the next one peace out big ass thumb butt bye bye and boom bye